have to say my first, well, my first awareness of Northgate came when I was working for the painter who was painting the exterior for the private developer. And that's when I was 18. Then fast forward, um, I think it was 1988 or so. Might have been, I think it was 88, some part later 88. Brenda Torpy and Amy Wright asked me to lunch and told me the intention, what the intention was um, to rehab Northgate. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first began to have the conversation where they had no direct involvement from me. But I began to explain to them, it doesn't sound as easy as you think. <laughs> And then the, uh, the, the whole reason for all that I began to be aware of, I became aware of the, the um, need to buy the place out in order to save it mm -hmm. and then in order to buy it out and fix it so that the quality of life of the residents could, could be elevated. And I'm not sure when your first yeah. dipping your toe in this pond so came So my up. first... Uh entry to Northgate was in 1989, somewhere like early. Yeah. <clears throat> in 1989, Brenda Torpy contacted us to come up to Northgate and meet with a group about managing the property because we had a reputation for managing resident controlled housing and nobody in Vermont had that experience. So we came up and I remember it was the early days and you could get an airplane from Boston to Burlington like, like that. So we just flew up for the day and Brenda uh, met us at the airport, I think. And um, Brenda had her long dreadlock braids at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just a ball of fire um, and gave us sort of the whole like, Reader's Digest version of what was happening at Northgate. And it felt like the right fit instantly. It was like, oh, this is going to be really fun working on this job. Well, it's um, the other the other piece of this is not only did Amy and Brenda inform me what they were going to do. They actually asked me to quit my job and see if I would come run the construction for them, <laughs> which I politely declined. But I did offer to help anybody who was involved in in the construction with ideas about how how to put it together because uh, they 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 were thinking it was going to be kind of a straightforward and easy task and the big thing that I could see was that it was a six million dollar construction project which at that time that was so was much money. Big. Yeah. And I said to them, uh, you're going to need an experienced architect that can help you with managing um, the, that the quality of the work, managing uh, that the work is meeting the specifications, and in particular, approving the payments. Because that amount of money mm -hmm. has got to be watched every month. And that is when um, uh, I just became more actively involved in introducing people to different people. And that's when mm -hmm. Tom O'Brien uh, met uh, Mike Richardson, Brenda, Amy, and I think Elizabeth Mulligan Drake might have been there. And um, it, it's funny, and we say this lovingly to you, Tom, but Tom gave them such a long history of architecture that they to this day, call him the history of architecture. So, um, <clears throat> so Tom, Tom got involved. And I will say this, that I thought that Tom brought a, a lot of um, really good independent thinking about the phasing mm -hmm. and really good independent thinking <clears throat> about the need for the owner's role with respect to the residents. And, and that he did his best in a very difficult uh, contract writing process to to come up with the language for the contract. Now, this whole time, I had no involvement. I was just Helping. genie yeah. citizen. <laughs> and then mystically, ironically, whatever the word is, 
it kind of blew my mind when Wright and Morrissey was the low bidder because that meant that I was actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And then, then that's when the rubber really hit the road for me. And, um, and we became involved in the actual, um, how to conceive the way the work would be done. And, uh, were you were you on board during construction? Yes. Yes, that's right. So thought. we we came on board I think probably mid 1989 yeah. and we're very involved in sort of getting to the closing <clears throat> and um one of our jobs was to work with the development consultant Emily Ochtenberg who um created this crazy wacky rent structure that worked and is still in place <laughs> 35 years later. Um, so thank you, Emily, for creating that because it's a big part of Northgate's success. Um, and we also were involved in meeting with the resident board, building a relationship with the um, Northgate Residents Association, helping everyone to empower them around decision making and, and having them understand that the, the big responsibility that they were taking on. Right. Right. Um, and they were just so impressive and unbelievable. Um, so committed as volunteers and they were putting in like yeah. full-time work after their own jobs every day. And so then Northgate Housing Inc. was Brenda was the president mm -hmm. and Amy Johnston was an employee yes. and Susan Marks was an employee of Correct. NHI. Yep. So, um, so when we first started, um, what we had figured out, cause we were starting in the winter mm -hmm. was that we would go through the entire site, clean out the basements, prep them for the boilers, insulate mm -hmm. the bands. So we were saying, we're going to interrupt every resident once all winter. Then we're going to come back through and interrupt them dramatically with doors and windows. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to come back and interrupt them again with uh, boilers and heat. And without the coordination mm -hmm. with Susan Marks, really. Yes, she was undoing. doing notifications to the residents and and prepping the areas mm -hmm. and communicating with us and um, that never would have worked. And, and I remember early on, there was a great desire, which understandably, um, to go a little bit slower so we could see how the process was working mm -hmm. with the residents, which overwhelmingly was amazingly good. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, the places where it was a challenge and, um, I remember the contract language was really strict about you've got to give a two week notice before you're going to access. And, mm -hmm. but what we found was it was organic in nature. It was like the more, you know, Maloney and HI and the people yeah. got to know one another, then it became this human experience of unit, whatever, not a good idea this week or yes. whatever was going on, whether yeah. it was a health event or the unit not being quite ready. And so it became a, we'll work with you if you work mm -hmm. with us. And I remember vividly one day it not working for somebody. And, um, and Tom, because he was the architect, set, came to the job meeting and he said, well, I think we might have to pull out the contract and revert back to, and Susan Marks at the end of the table could be seen I think it's working very well right now because she couldn't even envision changing it, changing <laughs> it because we had one problem and, and that's what ended up happening mm -hmm. was once we figured out how to work with the residents, how to work with, um, with, uh, the architect, how, how to work with it, things began very difficult start mm -hmm. by the middle of the summer. I remember vividly, in fact, I saw, I saw um, someone who worked on the job today and I was talking about today and I said, you remember the side of the dumpster? We were recycling for the first time. The, mm -hmm. To the moon, Alice, it, you know, if you dare put trash in this, this is a metal That's recycling right. bin. Yeah. And, and so it felt in the middle of the job, like we were part, we were part of Northgate. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was it was exactly. that that good a feeling. And the, there was a level of excitement from the residents because the conditions of the units were deplorable. They were in, yeah. I mean, they just needed such a crazy amount of work that that I think that the hardship of the rehab, the residents were willing to put up with it because they knew it was going to be done. Right. Um, right. And. One of the commitments we made early on um, in our work at Northgate was to hire residents in the management office and on the maintenance staff. Right, right. And, you know, it's a big site, 336 units. We needed a lot of people. Right. Um, and we started by just giving the people who worked for the prior owner a chance. Um, I don't think any of them made it. <laughs> After a couple of weeks, right. they were dropping. Right. Um, and we ended up hiring pretty much our entire staff were residents. Wow. Um, and and that has evolved over the years where people move to other positions outside of Northgate. Um, the two property managers we have now, Donna and Sarah, both were residents right. and were hired as part of our, res our commitment to hire residents and moved up to be managers. and. You know, at any given time over the years, most of the staff have been people who live here now or previously. Right. So that was that was a big, big deal, and it it was a great success yeah. and continues to be. Well, that you know that uniqueness of that many units means that many families. Yeah. It means, and um, and you know that challenge of working that closely around the kids. Mm -hmm. I, that, that was the thing that probably kept me up at night the most because you, you cannot, there's not one minute, can no. you? And I think that uh, I was pretty proud of the way that everybody responded, including the families when we were mm -hmm. like, you know, we need your help to keep your kids <laughs> off our staging. Um, but, you know, the signage and the workforce taking ownership and... Um, uh, I actually, there's a picture, this makes me chuckle. In the last CCTV footage, I saw a picture of a, one of the forklifts on site and we had had a speed limit put on those guys mm -hmm. and they occasionally violated it. But um, there was a sign on the back of one of them that I know was intended to say, be aware of children. But what it said was beware of children. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And um, so, you know, that that made that was the part, I think, while we were on the out, outsides, that was was probably the hardest. But the 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 other thing that was great was site wide. There were a lot of different professions of people. Mm -hmm. that were, so and there were um, a variety of people that were bending over backwards to be helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Baking brownies. That was sort of a yep. classic one. Yep. Um, but also um, providing security mm -hmm. because we had, you know, two million dollars or so of stored materials here, right. and we had residents living nearby that kept would call us, kept a watchful eye, oh, and I, I just remember thinking, you know, you can't bid a job knowing that you're going to, you can bid a job being afraid of what might happen, but mm -hmm. you don't normally think of all the people that are going to help you. And and the people the 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 uh, people in the construction industry that happened to live here, whether they were work ended up working for us or not, appreciated mm -hmm. the workers. Yeah. And so, but o overall, I thought um, on a human level, it, it's impossible to describe what a different kind of project it was. Yeah. And and, and we've had a lot of projects since that had uh, the feeling of that, particularly senior housing. Be, because of the connectivity yeah. of the residents, but this was different because it was so transformative, yeah, for the residents, and we felt a part of it, not just as an outsider. Right. We felt like we were brought in, not by everybody, but you know, yeah. by a lot of people. I think that the whole collaboration that that was facilitated really by Brenda as the leader of NHI and and you know, Wright and Marcy Maloney Properties. Tom O'Brien, <clears throat> there was this cohesive yes. team approach that it, it doesn't always happen. No, um, no. And it was, some of it was also driven by Northgate. All eyes were on Northgate. Right. From the funders to the, you know, 
the, the congressional delegation, the state level, everybody. It was like Northgate had to succeed. Right. And right. so there was this, this goal of excellence that everybody shared that I think still continues oh. today. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with that. <clears throat> and I, um, you know, we all wish there were more. This one is this one is unique for more yeah. reasons than you can really articulate. But um, I think the palpable shift in the change of the structures and the change of the systems, changing the the residents, um, uh, giving them the message of you matter and you va you're valued. That's right. You could feel it. And, um, you know, going from what some of the people were living in, I mean, we went into every unit. Yeah. So we saw mm -hmm. uh, the broken the broken doors, the broken glass, the freezing units, the lack of heat. <clears throat> and then knowing inside of that, on top of that, the craziness of their electric bills. And yep. <clears throat> so we could, you know, we saw that. Whereas I would say pre-Northgate, um, there probably would be nobody in the company that would ever want to live here. But after Northgate, you probably have everybody in the company yeah. would want to live here. And yeah. I think that that probably more than anything is what it tells you what you need yeah. to know. Yeah. And, and then I get to serve on the board, um, right. in the five years after that's when I got to really see the, the work of, um, of NROC and, and the engagement yeah. with, uh, the ownership model. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that was really interesting. Fast forward to us as Jay Morsey coming back here and walking into that empowerment, mm -hmm. having been mm -hmm. there for a long time. Yep. And, um, you know, you want to package this place and, and show the nation I know. what's possible. Exactly. So it was, yeah, it was in 2011. So, you know, in the first 10 years of the project, it it was really really uh, <clears throat> important in our role as managing agent and the the Northgate board members. We had to work really hard to convince the lenders that the residents really understood that their responsibility. There was a lot of like you know putting together a budget to get approval at VHFA, and it took a monumental effort to get every budget approved, like for years. It was meetings and pleads of please, you need to increase this budget. <laughs> and it was it was a lot of back and forth. And to VHFA's credit, I mean, they, they wanted to mitigate any risk they had, of course. But over time, you could see there was a shift at some point where they were seeing like, wow, Northgate really is doing great. Yeah, yeah. And so they they started shifting a little bit to be not quite as bureaucratic right, at that right. point. Um, and that was that and that's when and when Northgate did a restructure, you know, um, Housing Vermont exited the partnership. The residents took total control right. of the property through NROC. And then we started another rehab. Right, right. Well, I, you know, it's so it's so um, funny. Every time I drive out here, it's like I don't know if the uh, word pride is the right word. Um, there's an expansive feeling every mm -hmm. time you come out mm -hmm. here. It's like you can feel the decades. Yes. It's like you feel it the whole the whole time, and um, you know that's why I think that if there was any one person that I keep going back and I'm thinking, gosh, what an amazing job, you know, from the beginning was Brenda. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish she was here. Then we could just sing her praises right. to her face, but um, not that she doesn't know and hasn't heard it a thousand times, but <laughs> I did really love to watch the relationship between her and Amy Wright because Amy was just so you know, holding the, the ground while Brenda just, you yeah. know, plowed forward, plowed yeah. forward. And, um, and, and that's why I say, and I know there's more, more characters than, than the two of them, but, um, but from the heart, you know, all, mm -hmm. all of that from the heart. And then 
all the people that they brought bringing you in. I mean, mm-hmm. that was actually, that's one thing. I don't know um, how many people recognize that made all the difference mm. and the wisdom of that move because um, we're in, we're working in a lot of places mm-hmm. that did not have the wisdom to do what they did here. Right. With, with, with having uh, a firm like yours, a person like you doing what you're doing because um, all the things I said before couldn't have happened. Yeah. And, and none of this could have happened without, without all those players right. and those pieces, right. which makes it sound like uh, if you were at the front end, well, that'll never happen. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it seemed like a too big, yeah. A, yeah. too big a job for that to happen. And that's the part where I just really marvel Mm-hmm. Um, because it was the people. It's the people. It's it is the, the people. people. <laughs> and, and you know, resident controlled housing, like, you know, there's a lot of it around and people can pay lip service to it and say they believe in it. And But when you're working in it and you're, you're living and breathing it, that is what makes it work. It's not... It, it's not just saying, oh, yeah, this this works, and then just going off as a management company and just taking care of everything. I mean, it really requires you listen to people and you push for what they want, right. even if you don't want it. Um, and and I, I have to say, like, Northgate is probably the, the pinnacle of my career in terms of how proud I am of what I've contributed along with so many other people, but it's, and, and we've put structures and systems and protections in place to make sure that it, it goes on into perpetuity. Well, you know what's wonderful and sad about that at the same time? I, I It's the pinnacle of my career as well. <laughs> Only I was 30 then, and so I peaked a long time ago. Me too. <laughs> I don't even know if I was 30 by then. <laughs> I think I might have been like yeah. in my late twenties. And and you know when I and, and <laughs> what I actually have have reflected on many times is so because this did happen when I was young. I will say that it was foundational to me starting my own company. Mm-hmm. It was foundational to me uh, believing that I knew um, the important parts mm-hmm. of our work and. Um, so, and it was a, it's a bar, you know, it was a great, it set a great bar, not necessarily that I could ever exceed, but, um, that every situation you could strive for that. It's like, no, you're still noticing all the same things. That's right. Who are the people you're serving? You know, who's paying for it? Who are the people you're serving? Who are the people that you need Mm -hmm. on all sides? And how do you bring a healthy respect to everyone while you're doing what you do. Right. And, um, and demand a healthy respect. I remember that too. I will say we had our moments, actually, this is a human interest story, right? So we had our moments out here where, when it got challenging, um, you know, uh, NHI and Maloney and everybody actually, you know, the tenants were gods. That's right. Right. And, or we're, we're at a very elevated, uh, value. And I had absolutely no problem with that except for, so were the workers, Mm -hmm. you know? So there were times when I was like, you know, there's a lot of people out here Mm -hmm. and, and we all matter. And I remember different, different moments where I really had to advocate for that view. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and I think at the end of that, it was like, it was interesting to see the difference between that, that advocacy and the reality of that we're all humans, it, even with what we're pushing, you know? Yeah. And that's why I think it felt like it melded sort of beyond some of the rougher moments in the start, melded into one big family. Yes. Yeah. And culture. Yes. Of, yes. You know, like the be under the prior ownership and the, you know, it, the residents were mistreated in so many ways. They didn't just like, you know, abandon taking care of the buildings. They also were really not nice to the residents. And it, it was so easy to start from there. Yes. I mean, 
all all we had to do was the first make day we were better. here was make it better and be nice to people. Yeah. Which is pretty, you know, that's a pretty low bar. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and it empowered the residents to feel like they could complain. Yeah. And there wasn't going to be retaliatory anything. There wasn't that there was going to be somebody listening to them. Right. Um, and maybe we couldn't make it all right, but we at least could listen. Well, you know, it's funny because the whole nature of everything saying, well, when you shift from even the word complain to the word inform, mm -hmm. because when you feel like you're going to get a response, yep. then you're informing someone that there's a problem. Right, right. You know, it changes. Exactly. It changes the nature for both sides. And, yeah. And, uh. Well, I know, I know that, um, th there could be, this could be a week long with like many people, and many hours <laughs> and it's a little tough for just be the two of us. Cause there's so much infill and we're doing I the, know. we're doing the flyover, I know. I know. but, um, pretty extraordinary privilege to be connected to Northgate. Yeah. I will say that. And I knew that all along. And, and just even in terms of the, uh, the resident empowerment, I remember when we revisited however many years ago, um, our ongoing involvement out mm -hmm. here with the renovations and, um, my question, like, how do we, uh, how do we do that going forward? And, you know, does Northgate want to try somebody other than us or, you know, how, how do you want to do that on the mm -hmm. funding side? And going to the meeting to hear that the building committee people wanted, wanted us yep. made me feel like, okay, um, then we're doing, we're doing something right by our family kind of, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's like that, that sort of thing, but it was the empowerment part, you know, it's like, it's one thing, you know, all the funders and God bless them. Without them, nothing could happen. But when you when you get um, approval from the people, you're really the everybody you're really serving. serving. You're really yeah. serving. Yeah. Then that that felt that was another prideful moment. I guess absolutely. I that, and that I remember moment. that meeting so well because we we had to get multiple bids to meet the funding requirements right. and um, and. We just, the building committee said, you know, the, yeah, these other companies, they look fine, but we want Jeannie. We want J.A. Morrissey. We want them to be our contractor moving forward. And some, and, and that was the trust that they had in you from, you know, all the years that you had been involved before. But it was also their, their goal in moving forward and doing the, the second rehab was to make things better. Yeah. Not just to replace things, right. but to do improvement and do higher quality right. stuff. Right. And they felt that that was something that J.A. Marcy was exceptional at. And, um, wow. and that, you know, that really, that really um, resonated with them. That, and, and, you know, to VHFA's credit, they allowed us to continue with this phase-in plan that went yes. on for a very long time and continues today through their capital improvement program. And it's really maintained the property extremely well, but also improved it over time. Well, I think the moral of the story is extraordinary people accomplish extraordinary things. And yeah, like I, that, like I said, starting with the, the I'm not gonna say no until this yep. thing happens. And honestly, I will tell you, it's really hitting me just as we're talking when you say that you were brought in in the middle of 89, I just, I'm really hit by the wisdom of that. Mm. I mean, I guess I didn't, you know, it's been, it was a long time ago. I definitely knew the wisdom of it, you know, when you were here and active, yeah. but that even that pre-planning, I think that uh, it was probably a key part of success or failure. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. And for no other reason than being able to navigate the 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 future of the empowered resident exactly you know yep yep well good job and with that yes you too but and you know what we all shared in common was uh failure was not an option right i have never worked as hard in my right. life as i worked 
back then in, right. in right. Uh, January 1st of 1990. Yes, that's all true. I have never worked that hard in my yeah. life since then. Yes. Thankfully. A lot of phone calls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sleepless nights. Yeah. Um, and, and great, uh, uh, great sense of it was all worth it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which I'm working awfully hard now without that second part, but uh, you know, but this is something. Yeah. The crowning jewel, Northgate. Yes. The premier, <laughs> premier uh, residential community in Vermont, we think. 